Miles Morrison is just, he's amazing. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Just a, a wonderful human being, but he's also just a brilliant fundraiser and thinks about how do we bring more people into this and build those connections. He was telling me the other day, as we were talking about struggles in fundraising was a phrase, you've got to help people see that they're not giving to you. They're giving through you. Welcome to the How Leaders Think podcast, the show that transforms you by renewing your mind and giving you new ways to think. I am your host, Kenny Lang, and with me today is the Patricia Glass for a second time. She's one of the few that has been invited to return, or maybe she's one of the few that has accepted the invite to return. I don't know. One of those sounds better for for me. I'll let you be the judge, (laughs) but... She is the founder and owner now of Flourish. She, it is a dynamic support hub dedicated to empowering nonprofits, entrepreneurs, and small businesses in East Texas. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, With whoop. almost a decade of experience in nonprofit management, and those years are like dog years, mm-hmm. if you ask me. In a deep passion for community building, Patricia has made it her mission to help organizations grow, connect, and Thrive. Welcome back to the show, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, and thank you for coming coming to us from such a long distance away. Yeah, it's, international. It's really working. Yeah, it's. It, I'm really. We're breaking barriers. I have had someone internationally already on the show that I forgot what country they were in in Europe, and and now we're we're reaching intergalactically. I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah, no, 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 it is. And it's a great view from up here, honestly. <laughs> What's it like on your high horse? No, uh, I'm just kidding. You're just so small. Just. <laughs> oh, God, Stuart. Never mind. We're going to leave that alone. Tell me, Patricia, today, yeah. what is on your mind? Well, I think really what's been on my mind recently is this term that I heard at a conference, which is collective genius. And just how beneficial it is to to have that support in that community, to find a way to work together and making that true, genuine connection. Mm-hmm. So, what did what was the definition that that this person shared, or or what was the context around? the term collective genius, because I think genius gets yes. thrown around quite a lot and put in different contexts. Sometimes it is meaningless and other times it has a very specific use. What what did that mean in the context yeah. of where you heard it? This conference was the AFPI Con conference. So it's a whole bunch of nonprofit professionals and fundraisers mm-hmm. and just see people in that sector. And there are so many nonprofits with not the same mission, but similar missions. And how can we come together to further each mission? An example would be someone who does counseling. There's a lot of nonprofits that do counseling, but don't really deal with the suicide prevention side of it. And how does that work? There are multiple food pantries from every, in, in every city. And it's mm-hmm. how can we make sure that even though we we do have the same or similar mission, that we can work together to further all of our missions and how can we help each other out. But I, I even think that goes a step further when it comes to even businesses or entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and helping nonprofits and, and vice versa. I think there's such a power to it. Yeah. I love that concept. It's one that I'll be honest, I, I've been attempting to embrace over the last year or so i i wonder what your perspective has been and just processing that term and and all the things that you just shared on if this is something worth calling out and espousing from from a stage or, or anything else it usually means that it's not something widely held because otherwise it's, well, we already know it. Why are we having another talk on it? Why are we writing a book? Why are we doing this? So what have you seen or, or, or even seen studies on 
what's happening now that is maybe the antithesis of maybe it's just the individual genius at work. What's what's the oh, need man. that is or or what is it that is creating a need for thinking in terms of collective genius? Yeah. You might want to have some like playoff music ready because like I'm super passionate about this and I will probably just ramble. So just have some playout music and I'll walk off stage. I think one of the biggest things in my my specific niche and nonprofit is new new nonprofits, really helping them start and helping them grow. And I think from what I've seen is the larger or more known nonprofits or more established, who would be a better word, more established nonprofits, they see these up and coming nonprofits that may mm-hmm. have similar missions or do something similar to what they do, but have a new idea on how to do it or what it, whatever it may be. And they get nervous and they get scared, right? Because there's only so many dollars and there's only so many grants and there's only so many donors that that you can get, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that if we partner together, that's more money for both of us. It's not competition. And we got to stop looking at nonprofits as competition. They're, that That's just like with the organizational standpoint. But then you have Facebook contest of vote for your favorite nonprofit, vote for this person, and the last person gets this much money. It's no, like you're you're just you're just making it worse because we're we're not yeah. competition. There's programs that we can hold together that are mm. similar or same. I started a nonprofit, and one another nonprofit called me into their office, slapped me on the hand, and told me like, "That's what we're doing." And it was like, well, no, you are you run this service and mm-hmm. I run this service and you can bring your people to me and then my people can go to you for this. So it's similar, but it's not the same. Mm-hmm. And you, there's people who can write grants together to get more money and, and talk yeah. about their partnership. So I think that competitiveness is just built in from us from a vote for your favorite also to oh no, they're going to take our funding. And and that's not the case. The more we work yeah. together, the more ripple effect and impact that we can have that, that would really just affect so many more lives and have a ripple effect. Right. Because at the end of the day, nonprofits are on a mission to create a certain level of impact or number of positive outcomes on a particular cause or people group, right? Yeah. And uh, I I love what you're saying because it is a a rising tide lifts all ships or or the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts sort of thinking. And it sounds like the collective genius terminology and or or just frame of mind is really a response to what sounds like scarcity thinking yeah instead of really being more abundance minded is oh well if if somebody else is starting a thing well now suddenly we're going to get as much money for our thing right and i was like well maybe you need to be more clear about what it is you do and how you help and showing proof that what you do works instead of just banking on your brand right um I feel like we're going to generate some emails by the end of this episode, but I'm okay, and I'm here for it. <laughs> but no, I, I love what you're saying because even in business, where in the for profit, where they, there legitimately is and should be some level of of competition in the marketplace, I think it keeps a, a lot of us honest. Is part of the reason why I love capitalism is you can you can start something right? Yeah. Oh, th- there's somebody doing that. Okay, cool. Like I'm not the first person to launch a coaching practice. Right. But I have my own take on it and I have my own views on how to do it. I have just my own approach. Just and I'm based sure on you how I'm also wired. reach out to mentors or other coaches mm-hmm. to say, hey, maybe this didn't work. What do you do? Or, hey, could we partner mm-hmm. together? You're really good at this part. And and that's just what's so important is, hey, I, and also it's vulnerability. And I think everybody knows, unfortunately, how good I am at being vulnerable. 
But I have no problem with saying, this is what I'm weak at. This is, right. this is what I want to learn. And being able to say, you did this really well. Maybe you don't touch on this as much as I do. We can learn for together and have a better impact. Right. And I, yeah. Something else, and what you just said strikes me too, is what you're talking about I'm going to say, I'm going to choose uh, carefully the word return mm -hmm. because that's where it should have been in the first place, but returns the focus back to the cause, the yes, people. Yes, the mission. Who are, yeah, right. <laughs> like, and I might even take it past just what your, your mission is because I think there's a lot of people who will take mission mm -hmm. and use it to become tribal uh, yeah. about their mission. Mm -hmm. But it's really hard when you keep the person, the humanity in front of you to say, oh, well, yeah, I'm not going to let you be served in this total way because I can't do it. Therefore, you don't deserve to get it instead of going, oh, hey, yeah, I think you could actually meet this part of their need a lot better. It's it. When you keep the people, when you keep the, yeah, when you keep the people in front of you, it becomes very difficult for you to become self-centered and say, no, this is about me and about how awesome I am and look how many people I'm helping and right. patting myself on the back and keeping others out. And I want all the glory for solving this yeah. cause. Let's be honest. If your cause can be entirely solved by you as a singular organization, you have picked a cause that is way too small. Right, right. Exactly. I know that that is perfect. I think that that's exactly right. And I, I never thought of it that way of, we always say mission driven, like you, you want to make sure that your, your mission, but we shouldn't just be mission driven. We should be community driven and uh, human kindness driven. And right. No, that was a really great way to put it. And I think sometimes people are the mission, right? People are. The mission. Yes. Let's yeah. Let's make a t-shirt yeah, right no. here. Wow, we have a store going with all of our little sayings. No, people are the mission. That's 100%. Um, and I think just being able to have that vulnerability or lack of ego or that mine is the end-all, be-all um, mm -hmm. of just reaching out and, and saying like, hey, what are you doing? This is really awesome. I can give get people your way. Um and not try to recreate what they're doing and and lose sight of your programs. I tell people all the time, I'm not a fundraiser. I am not good at that. I love creating genuine connections with people. I mm -hmm. love the building rapport. And typically, I can get you just as excited as I am about whatever I'm trying to do or whatever yeah. I believe in. But when it comes to asking for money, that is not me. But I have some really great friends that I refer people to. If you need a yeah. fundraiser or a capital campaign or logo, you go to my guy. Yeah. That that's and I think sometimes that that's hard for people to see in the mm -hmm. business world and also nonprofits. Yeah. Right. But I'll go back to a word you used is vulnerability. It does take vulnerability to say, I can't solve all this on my own. But I, I would venture a guess, both for those people I haven't encountered, but and maybe those that I, I have, is that it really comes from a place of insecurity. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll be honest, I, I don't run a nonprofit. I'm on leadership of a church, which is a, a form of a nonprofit. But even um, being on a board, you're on boards. I'm on a board. Yeah. I'm on a board to turn that that there's a, a parody song in there somewhere but, i'll use it for the summit to introduce you thank you you're welcome uh i and i'll come out with the shirt people are the mission yeah. i actually might get that made that'll be fantastic and then we'll have our logos on. yeah but insecurity is also a form of ego mm -hmm. and i gotta be honest it, it would break my heart to think that my insecurity kept somebody from getting the help that they needed right I, I can't be the obstacle that there was something you brought up fundraising. I was talking with actually uh, someone who's the organization I'm on the board for 
it's, it's Hope Haven of East Texas. And I was talking to their director of community partnerships and he's Miles Morrison. He's just, he's amazing. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Just a, a wonderful human being, mm -hmm. but he's also just a brilliant, just fundraiser and thinks about how do we bring more people into this and, and build those connections. And something he was telling me the other day as we were talking about like just struggles in fundraising and these different things uh, was a phrase. It's like, you've got to help people see that they're not giving to you, they're giving through you. Ooh, so I have a little tidbit that I've learned is the ROI, the return on investment for donors is how mm -hmm. much of an impact their money is making. They're not expecting a return, right? right? They're expecting mm -hmm. their hearts to be full. They're expecting right, right. For someone to get fed, clothed, safe place, a, a community mm. built, learn, whatever the organization is. That's their expectation. Mm. That That's what we also need to let other people see when we when we talk to donors and whatnot is mm -hmm. this is your return on investment. What we are doing, these people that we've helped, these people are our mission and you're directly right. affecting them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm pivoting just a, a, a smidgen yeah, here, yeah. and that's a real technical term I learned in college, yeah. smidgen. I'm a man of science. But, Me too. Uh, yeah, clearly, astronaut glass. Um, it has a ring to it. It does, it does have a certain... There's another t-shirt that I think we should make. Yes. But with... We're we're launching this podcast. So if you're listening to this in in the future in 2025 and beyond or something like that, you're you're just now you're you're launching Flourish, right? Um, right. and and having the the co working space is is opening and and I'd love to hear more about. You've already shared some of it with me um, yeah. off the air, but what the vision is for that beyond just yeah. hey get this little tidbit. But why did you pick? helping nonprofits get started and launched because that's something that as I, I I've been circling the nonprofit world and more and more trying to help these nonprofits is I see a lot of people who are like, Oh yeah, the, the capital campaign, or you need to do a rebrand or something. It's everything is geared for these people who are already off the ground, off and running, yes. probably have six figures plus in the bank so they can afford to spend a little extra on, on a vendor, a consultant or something. You've intentionally chosen a people group that I don't see getting a lot of attention. And I'm curious why you went that way. Multiple reasons. One, I was a nonprofit founder or am a non doesn't go away. I am a nonprofit founder and I was very fortunate to have a little bit of experience in nonprofits, but I was very, very fortunate to have a lot of background in business. I was in property mm -hmm. management for a long time. And so I had background in the marketing for that and, and people skills and budgets and all that fun stuff. And when I started the nonprofit, it was easy and it excelled a lot faster than any of us were expecting because we had those foundations. We had the, the everything in place for it to be successful right off the bat. And what I've seen with a lot of nonprofits or starter nonprofits or founders is they are, they don't know where to start. They are paying lawyers and a, a lot of money to start their nonprofit or they're going to the, trying to do it themselves. So they're going to the wrong site and, or they figure out that they need to, you know, start with their formation and then go to their 501c3. Um, but there, it's so confusing to start and you you get behind you you could be at year three by the end of year one but you're still trying to figure out what do my bylaws mean where do i get bylaws um how do i customize them to me for them to make sense um mm -hmm. you know it it, it it's yeah. it's hard and i truly believe also if you need to play the music just let me know because i get super passionate about it hence why i started something for it um it it's hard 
And mm -hmm. there, there, there's not very many resources for those people. And I truly believe in the power of grassroots mm -hmm. initiatives. And not, mm -hmm. we're not saying that the, the million dollar plus people aren't making huge impacts because they are. I am not saying that. I do not want an email. <laughs> but if you give a new nonprofit $500, or you give a million dollar plus nonprofit $500. Who's going to have the bigger impact? They don't have salaries. They don't have a brick and mortar. How far is that money going to go? Versus yeah. how far is this going to go? Right? So it's one, because I've been there. One grass or two grassroots, right? That that money is going to go further, and then I went when I started a nonprofit. I applied for my first grant, and I was super excited. It was ten thousand dollars. That might not be a lot to some, but for someone who is paying everything out of their pocket, it was huge. It was right. huge. Probably our yearly budget we got. It was great. But I wanted to steward the money so well. I did not want to disappoint. I did not want to mess it up because we put so much on us, or at least I did, that to make this successful. And so I called consultants. I called friends. And guess how much the bid was for? $8,000, $10,000. That, I can't afford that. That's not stewarding the money well, right? Right. So, I wanted to be an affordable consultant specifically for starter nonprofits so we can make a bigger impact. So there could be a ripple effect. So mm. you are not heart led, which is it's important to be heart led, but starting off heart led, you, your mom and your dad and your uncle and your cousin and your best friend are on your board. That's not really strategic, right? But you're heart led and you think that they have their, that, that passion that you have and they believe in you, but you need people who mm -hmm. don't believe in you on your board. Maybe not that much, but believe in the mission. But it's like, this is a newbie nonprofit, right? You need people to, right. to go against you. You need people to challenge you. And those yes people are going to do that. And so just not being heart led from the very beginning and being business mindset. So those can mm -hmm. both come together so when you're on year five, you're not like, what do my bylaws actually say? Your board isn't in chaos. You're, you're actually have the data set in place from the very beginning to apply for grants because I've seen people, they're three, four years in and they're applying for grants and they're like, well, I don't know. I don't have all my, uh, who I'm serving or the stats on how many people have come through, right? You need to implement that from the beginning. And those aren't things that you think of. So let's start yeah. from good foundations from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then you can grow. Yeah. Your your heart may get you started, but it won't keep you going. Right, right. Yeah. Um, which is is something you and I really unite around the, the language I, I've, chosen to use them and my business is turning purpose into performance right right is you take it be full of purpose please by all means a purposeless nonprofit it sounds like an oxymoron right but but at some point you've got to you got to hit numbers you got to be strategic you've got like you said you've got to have people who challenge you you've got to figure out hey i i i love you cuz cuz you're on my team and helping me but you're right. actually not getting the things done that the person in this position needs to get done yeah i'm sorry thanks for playing we got to bring somebody else in who can actually execute against this because going back to what we were saying before at the end of the day it's about the people we're serving it's not about making folks happy by hiring all your friends that's how mc hammer went broke so and we don't need a repeat of that. No. I don't think America can can go through that again. There's only so uh, many parachute pants that we can have. Golden parachute pants. There's something woven together yeah. uh, there. Yeah. But and and tell me, how did you come about the name Flourish? 
So it was 2021, a hard year for for me. Mm-hmm. It was a hard year for our family. My daughter was born in March of 2020, so she was a fun little COVID baby. Yeah. Shortly after that, my mom got diagnosed with cancer and spent a lot of time in the hospital starting working on this nonprofit that I had. And I always do vision boards, right? But that year was was rough. I was a new mom and all the things. And I just wanted to flourish. I just wanted to grow. I wanted to be different, still be authentic to me. And that that's how it started. It was just, I wouldn't say I was in a rut, right? I was a new mom with a mom who has cancer and in the middle of COVID. So it was not, not a rut, but it was like something has to change. I, I need to do more and I need to use my talents, my treasures and my times for, for something. But at that point, I didn't quite know what it was. And so it came with Flourish. So when I started this journey, finding a name was so hard for me. I didn't, nothing felt right and nothing felt good. I was told to use my name or what about this? And it just, it all sounded so silly. And I was sitting down with a, an executive director, Jessica Domingos with the EV effect. I used to be on their Shout board out. and I know, yeah, all these wonderful nonprofits. And I was sitting with her at True Vine on my birthday, and we were just reflecting. We were reflecting on how the, it was Tiny EV Rocks, now it's the EV Effect, and how they've grown and what they've done with their mission and where I was when I started on the board and, you know, how I grew. And I did my vision, or I didn't do a vision board that year, but I did that painting, I did it with her and her organization. And she was like, do you remember your word was flourish and just how much you grown? And I was like, wait a second. <laughs> that because that's what we want. We want mm-hmm. either nonprofits to grow and flourish, but we mm-hmm. also want entrepreneurs and, and people who are in business to grow and to flourish. And I think that that space would help that. Oh, no, no, not, mm-hmm. I don't think. I know it will help. I, yeah. I've i seen it. I've seen the power of collective genius. I've seen the power of community coming together in all sectors and all spaces. And I think just providing a safe place with people who have similar values and mission, it, it it's going to be a really beautiful and amazing thing. I believe so, too. I'm excited for it. Now, you, you have a few things that you're doing. So you're you're helping them, new nonprofits get off the ground. And, right. and you, maybe you want to mention like specific things that, that you offer there. And then talk a little bit about the co-working space and how that fits into what Flourish is. Because I think at first glance, people may think co-working space, well, that sounds like a totally separate business, but you've found a way to really integrate it with right. your mission. So can you talk a bit about that? Yeah. Flourish, there, there's like really kind of like three parts to it, right? There's the consulting side, which is me. Well, me and Michelle. Michelle Kenyon, she joined my team. She is my my fundraiser development director because like I said before, I'm not good at that. <laughs> so I needed someone to help help me help nonprofits with that. Consulting, our consulting would be more for new nonprofits. But the way it's a little bit different than most consultants is I will do some of the work for you, but I'm going to guide you. I'm going to coach you. When I was talking to my marketing team, who's helping me put this together, Sigler and Christ, we're going to do another shout out. They really, I was telling them like, I want to be in the trenches with you. I want to mm-hmm. work with you. I want, I, I know the pain that went into it. So I want to be in the trenches. I want to guide you. I want to coach you. I want to work with you. It's not Mm -hmm. just here's your development plan. Go. Here's your strategic plan. No, it's let's sit through this and work it out together. 
Let's right. brainstorm. Let's have that connected our collective genius together one on one. Um so we we could work that out together. So I think that's where we'll different differentiate from other consultants is one is the the new nonprofit side, but also being with you through your journey mm-hmm. and not just, oh, well, we put your budget together. You're good to go. It's no, let's figure out how we're going to implement it and actually get it going. Or you just had a really tough board meeting. Call me. Like it, it's hard. And I want to be your, mm, this is going to be so Enneagram two of me. I want to be your best friend. I want to be your best friend and I want to help you out through this because it's not easy and you don't deserve to do it alone because most founders, they're doing it alone because they don't have the right board and they can't afford an employee. It's just them. So we want to be your other person. And with that, right, is the the co-working space. There has been so many people that I have met at coffee shops or at luncheons and all those fun things where I was like, can I pick your brain? Can I talk to you for a second? You don't know me from Adam, but I'm going to be real invasive and ask you some questions. And they've helped me and become my mentor. And and it's been amazing. I mean, yeah. that has just been in, in coffee shops or in passing. So providing a space where entrepreneurs, small businesses, and nonprofits can come together and and work either independently or together, I think mm-hmm. is going to have a huge impact. There, yeah. I'm really not meaning to do all these shout outs, but I, when I started my, my nonprofit, I met a random guy named Casey Muse, and he was doing some drumming and I got tagged in a Facebook post because he helps with neurodivergent children and he's a small business that helped my nonprofit. And mm. it's little things like that. It could be someone who, who plays drums or someone who does websites and design or they're a really good handyman and you need a ramp built or whatever it may be that's there. I Even at my last round table that I had, there was two different missions. One was a, not a tutoring. She's more, she does ARDS and IEPs and, and helping the school process. And there was one that did CPS things and providing care for children. And the lady who did the schoolwork, she's also a published author. And she was like, wouldn't it be amazing if there was a book that you can give with your blankets to help children through that CPS journey? So mm-hmm. two completely separate missions, but they were still able to to help. And wow. they're working together to write a book. It, That's it, fantastic. It's amazing what could come even though you're not in the same field or you have the same mission. Mm-hmm. You're able to help grow and promote and impact our community. And, and that's really what I want is like-minded people who want to impact the community, who are willing to work together, admit where they're weak or where they're good at, and they can help somebody else. Mm-hmm. I think that it would really help everyone flourish, make a bigger impact on their business, on their nonprofits. And then in the back, the the kind of the third part is the training room, right? So nonprofits need training. They need to be, especially the newbies, they need training. They Mm -hmm. need to be able to have affordable training that can impact their organization and not just be run of the mill. Well, they need more in depth. But the, the, on the other hand, the small business owners or the entrepreneurs, they have training classes. It might not affect the the nonprofit, but it might be good information. It might affect somebody else. So it's going to help these small businesses and nonprofits and entrepreneurs grow to do their training. Because even I think there's board or nonprofits that also do trainings mm-hmm. that they need a space for. Yeah. They also need a space. This training room can turn into a boardroom. Mm-hmm. 
because they're doing board meetings out of their house. So it is just a place for all people to connect and grow no matter what you're doing or what your mission is. We are going to work together to make a bigger impact on our community. I love that. It's it's going to be awesome. I'm very excited. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll be checking you out as you grow and as yeah. you flourish. As I flourish. Thank as you. you flourish into the night sky. Um, yes. So, Patricia, if people wanted to know more about you, know more about Flourish, get more information, or or maybe look up what the membership for the co-working space, if they're here in East Texas, where would you send them? And my website is flourishnonprofits.com. You can check out our website there. You can always email me at patricia at flourishnonprofits.com. I know filming this right now, I don't have my social media handles yet. But that will be on the website. Excellent. And your, your, we'll, we'll also include your LinkedIn profile. And I'm sure that you'll be making yes. plenty of posts and, and guiding people to where um, they get the information that's relevant and right for them. Yes. But uh, I'm about this. I'm excited for you. I'm, I'm excited I get to maybe participate a little bit and, and seeing yes. everything blow up and, and having maybe some trainings in those training rooms. So that will be exciting. Well, thank you so much for being a guest and thank you, the listener, because without you, we would just be having a conversation um, Yeah, because otherwise somebody would be eavesdropping. Um, and then that weird. Um, if, hey, I want to know what they're talking about, but I don't want them to know that I'm I'm there. That's eavesdropping. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if it's illegal, it's kind of rude, it's, but it's rude. So um, thank you for not being rude and listening to this in appro- on approved yes. channels. Um, but, uh, if you wouldn't mind, do me a huge favor, like subscribe, rate review. Um, one, it gives me feedback. I mean, if you think this totally sucks, then okay, let me know and and I'll do everything I can to make it better because I do want to make this something that is valuable and helpful to you. The other thing is this is a free and easy way for you to help your fellow leaders. Just like Patricia was talking about being an entrepreneur, being, uh, whether you're a founder of a for-profit or a nonprofit organization. It's a struggle. It's real. And then a lot of times you're isolated and you're just looking for that next tip, that next uh, tactic, that next thing that will help you break through. And you sharing, liking, rating and reviewing bubbles things up so that people can find this content. And you never know this could be the breakthrough that someone you don't even know uh, needs uh, to find. And so that's a free way to just pay things forward. So I'd appreciate it. But until next time, change the way you think, you'll change the way you lead. We'll see you.